All right, I said for concave mirrors, students usually are really good at drawing the ray diagrams for them, but I said there's kind of one special case, and this is one that gets put on the diploma quite a bit, and it really gets students. So the special case is going to be when the object is located between the focal point and the mirror. That's a special case. That one requires a little bit of extra attention. So we're going to still draw our ray diagrams, or our rays, and we can certainly draw one ray. We can go parallel to the principal axis. So if I go parallel to my principal axis, and then this is going to reflect such that when it reflects off the mirror, it's going to pass through the focal point. That one hasn't changed. What kind of comes up now, though, that gets people is, well, wait a minute. That's really the only ray I know how to draw. I can't draw it through the focal point and have it pass parallel to the principal axis, and I can't really do anything with the center of curvature. This is where they're trying to get you. We can draw the second ray. It's going to require a little bit more finesse. We're used to drawing something going through the focal point and then reflecting parallel with the principal axis. That one's a little bit more difficult this time. What's actually going to happen, and this is the trick, you're going to start at the focal point. What you want to do is you're going to start that focal point. You want to pass the light ray just over top the tip of the image. So we want to pass the light ray just like this. So like that light ray along this trajectory here from the tip of the arrow to the mirror, that's just the same as saying is if is as if it originated from this focal point. So that's going to be our light ray. And then this is going to reflect parallel to my principal axis. Now, you're going to see we have two rays, but you're going to say, Mr. Donnell, you told us two rays is sufficient. Why do we not see an intersection of the rays? Well, we run into a problem. You'll notice that these two reflected rays they're diverging from one another. These are not going to converge. So we might say, did I did I lie to you? No, I didn't. But this is where we this is where the diploma is trying to be really sneaky. If we notice the rays aren't going to be converging on the same side of the mirror, we're going to look on the other side of the mirror instead. So what we want to look at is we just want to look at extending these real light rays. We're going to extend them back into virtual territory. So this second ray I drew, let's just extend that back into virtual territory. And then this reflected ray here, let's extend that back into virtual territory. So we're gonna so what your brain's trying to do is, okay, if it notices it doesn't converge over here, it's gonna try and look into the virtual realm and see where it converges to see where this image originated from. So if we extend those ref real reflected rays back into the kind of the virtual area, we do notice an intersection at this point. So this is going to be the tip of our arrow. So we're going to draw the tip of our arrow. And then we can fill in the arrow. So this is going to be the image here. And that's a really tricky one. So we got to be really careful with that. So our image, it is certainly bigger than our object. So we can say that this is enlarged. It's attitude, they're both pointing up. So we could say that this is upright. Position, oh, I probably should have put a virtual focal point. I'll just say, I guess for the moment, position, I don't really have. It should, if I recall, it should be, we're just going to say it's to the right of the mirror. We're just going to solve that problem this way, to the right of mirror. Easy enough. And in fact, it should be, if we had this like virtual focal point over here, it should be past this virtual focal point. And then the type. We have a convergence of virtual rays, so this is going to be a virtual image. This one, you really want to know, that's the one that seems to get tested quite a bit. It's really sneaky and it's really challenging. This is why they love asking about it. So just the last thing before we start getting into the mathematics, we just have kind of a table here. So for concave mirrors, where you place the object, whether it's at the focal point, the center of convergence between the center of curvature, sorry, the center of curvature, 
let me restart that again. That was really bad phrasing. So depending on where we position the object, so if it's past the center of curvature, if it's at the center of curvature, if it's between the focal point and the center of curvature, if it's at the focal point or that special case, if it's between the focal point and the vertex, we can distinguish all of it. We can have all the different types of characteristics. You don't need to know this. You can get all this information from a properly drawn ray diagram. The only special case is if you place your object at the focal point, when you draw your rays, they will always be parallel to one another. You will not have a convergence of those rays, so you will not have an image formed. So that's kind of the special case. Now you'll notice I talked strictly about concave mirrors. Why don't I have a table like this for convex mirrors? Well, the answer is all convex mirrors produce the same type of image. They're always going to be diminished, they're always going to be erect, and they're always going to be virtual. So that's pretty much all we got to say about ray diagrams. The next part is to actually do the math, the real physics stuff. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, the ray diagrams are meant to be as a plan B. They're not meant to be the primary method due to the question.